Fannie Lou Hamer helped pave the path that I'm walking on right now because she showed up and she answered the call when so many people were afraid to do so. Is this America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, where we have to sleep with our telephones off of the hook because our lives be threatened daily? It's because of organizers like Fannie Lou Hamer that we are able to do the work that we do today. Fannie Lou Hamer was a giant in every sense of the word. She was a fighter. She was someone whose diction and ability to move people rivaled with even that of Martin Luther King Jr. She was incredible in her ability to be steadfast in her beliefs and understanding the power of her voice and using that to transform communities. We have to recognize that she was a woman, first and foremost, a black woman born in Mississippi, one of the most dangerous states to be born into as a black woman during that time. Despite being beaten, despite being threatened, despite having a forced hysterectomy, despite all of the trauma that she experienced at the hands of white supremacy, at the hands of white men and white women who wanted to uphold a system, she still fought anyways. But are we intimidated? No. no. Are we intimidated? No. no. Are we intimidated? No. Absolutely not. Because this is a movement. This is not a moment. And we are making sure that our voices are elevated and centered in this work. There are so many similarities between what Fannie Lou Hamer was fighting for then and what we are currently fighting for now. Jobs, freedom, voting rights, police brutality. All you need is the will to fight and Fannie Lou Hamer is a perfect example of that and that was a lot of the energy that we took into Freedom March NYC. Today we are reminded of a delayed promise by this America. A promise that says independence, freedom, and justice for all. But are we all free? No! Are we all free? No! This was during the time when there were rubber bullets being sprayed and everyone said to stay home. And my response was, if not me, then who? And if not now, then when? Voting is more than just simply putting someone in a position. It's about what they do when they are in that position, and that is the power of the vote, that for so long it's taken us so much time to get there. When we think about voting rights, we have to understand that the vote and the power of the black vote in particular has always been seen as something that is a threat to white supremacy. And it wasn't too long before three white men came to my cell. One of these men was a state highway patrolman. And he asked me where I was from. And they left my cell and it wasn't too long before they came back. He said, you are from Roosevelt, all right, and he used a curse word. And he said, we're going to make you wish you was dead. All of this is on account of we want to register to become first-class citizens. 
it was raw, it was honest, it was true, it was unapologetic. And so when we say no justice, no peace, understand that we are a part of something bigger. To this day, there are activists and organizers who are being put in jail, and the civil rights and the voting rights acts are currently under attack, specifically right in southern states throughout the U.S. And so we're seeing a theme that keeps on coming up about who has the ability to vote in this country. What we are seeing is that the relics of slavery have taken on so many different forms that we don't even know where to begin. And instead of starting in a way that completely chooses to uproot the system, we are running away from the truth and the reality of the America that we have built and the America that was designed. And so the question then becomes, how do we reimagine what this America can look like? Everyone should know about this woman's life. It's because of organizers like Fannie Lou Hamer that we are able to do the work that we do today. We are far from done, but as Fannie Lou Hamer said, we are sick and tired of being sick and tired, and so the work continues. Yeah.